this week, Blake Austin, named in the England elite training squad. Um, he's an Aussie. He's yeah. got a parental grandmother who's, who's English. Parental grandmother? He was, he was a friend. Yeah. <laughs> Don knows what I mean. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, don't worry, Mark. It's fine. It's just, so, it's fine. Yeah, grandmother from his yeah. mother's uh, side. It's fine. So, he, he is in that England squad. Where do you sit? I was with Jamie Jones Buchanan this week. Absolutely not. Absolutely not having any of that at all. Wilkin. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know what you're coming to me for because you, you, you think... Well, I'm you've always got views on these sorts well, of things. Yeah, I mean, you, you slaughtered Tyrone McCarthy and the Irish sort of set No, because he's pretending that Ireland play rugby league. Yeah, okay. Let's, we'll, we moved on from <laughs> that. He, he hates you, by the way. No, but so. they, I know that Ireland don't play rugby league. Yeah, okay. They've got an international rugby league team. We've got to say him enough. He anyway, hates you. Right. What do I think about it? I think it's the way the world is now, isn't it? England cricket team, England rugby union team. Yeah. Well, look, as Caucasian athletes, like we've always looked around the world to inherit different traits from people. Like the the Samoans of the Pacific Islands have been heavily sought after as a source of power. And you know, look at England rugby union with the Vunapolas, the Manitou Alangi, the heritage of the Samoan, you know, Tongan, Fijians have always sort of felt naturally easy to slot into, especially the, the Australian team. One mm. of the first Australian teams I played against had uh, Petro Sivanasiva in, who was a Fijian guy in the front row. So it's not it's not something new, but it almost feels alien to us as Englishmen for some, for some reason. I think it's more, if I'm really honest, because it's an Australian. And deep-rooted is... This it's the biggest of, rivalry we've got, and we're kind of stealing that. Yeah, place. and it's like conflict, isn't there? Yeah. And, and and there's there's a bit more to it than it's just Blake Austin. But surely, sorry to interrupt you there. That's a good point to say. Surely that would feel disgusting for you playing for England. Then if we go down that, disgusting. that, that no. Well, funny well, enough, you could play for I'm, England. I came to me. My dad's mother was actually English, mm-hmm. but like John touched on, I think across all the world now, there's a lot of countries where there's a lot of boys that have mm-hmm. multiple um, heritage from from different nations. Yeah. But like John said, maybe it is because he is a, an Aussie mm. that people are blowing up and he's taking a potential Englishman's spot. But I guess it's sort of the way the world is now. Is it not a reflection of our country and our multinational, diverse country? That yeah. I think Owen Morgan said it after the game that they had the look of the Irish, Irish but they, they had a, one of the Muslim lads who played said they had Allah on their side as well. So it's a reflection of a world, a world we want to live in rather than you know, putting borders up like, like the United States and it's you, you're either white, you're black, you're American or whatever. In, in the modern world, like one thing we've never really dealt with in terms of identifying yourself as specifically from somewhere is, is, is the sort of the global nature of the world now. How easy yeah. it is to travel and work in other countries. Like we've, I don't think sports really got to terms with the fact that you can uproot and live in, in Australia, in New Zealand. You can, like Joe, you can come over and live in, in the UK. You can go creeping around coffee shops in Manchester. You can, you can travel the world. You can do what you like now. And, and sport's not really caught up. What I would like to see is a dead clear message from a sport that says, right, these are the rules. This is the rules. You were born in this country. You spent X amount of time in this country. Well, they do have those it. rules. But they do. But then I, I think we flirt with it. I don't think that's clearly out there. Well, is no, it? The, in the Blake Austin case, his grandmother is. But English. what I'm saying is there would be a disagreement that that is justification to play for England when you've yeah. spent your whole life in Australia, but your family's I'm more interested background. in the point. Would you be able to sleep at night, Joey Lassick, playing for England? Yes. Well, I think are you I, proud of well, you? Why, why, why? Why? I, I, proud could, of I reckon, for, for for example, grandparents. I think that's not too far down the line. It's not my great 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 grandmother, for example. Um, you know, my dad. I never got to meet my dad's mum, unfortunately. But you know, he he's he's he loves coming over here to England. You know, it's part of him. It's it's part of me. So, I think, like um, John said, you know, the rules probably do need to get established a bit more. But I'd, I'd have no problem. You know, would Sam Burgess get a gig for Australia? No. Why not? Well, does he have any well, Australian? Well, when he could. becomes a resident. Or? When he becomes a resident. Yeah, citizen. but he's already played for England. Yeah. So what we're saying is Blake Austin's fine to play for England because he hasn't played for Australia. Yeah. But okay. if, if you're a resident, you've got a passport. Why doesn't that enable you to play for that country? No, no, I'm saying it does. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that's what yeah. I'm saying. But would no, what my point is, would Australia accept Sam Burgess into the team is what I'm saying. Mm. Would, would it be like... He's, I'm, he's I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that I think... But we're not in a, England now, or Great Britain aren't in a position to kind of say no to these yeah, great players. Well, they are, but they're not getting it. We're not, but we're not beating Australia and New Zealand consistently. So. It's not, but they were, uh, uh, specifically in Blake Austin's case. But it's not the first time, Will, so we're, what we're doing is... We're, we're, no, I know, we're, I know. Blake Austin's the topical thing. But he's a winger. He's, he's a top scorer in Super a League winger. this season. He's a winger. He, he's, he's a top scorer in Super League this season. <laughs> he's a halfback. <laughs> he's a halfback. <laughs> but he could play on the wing because he's quite fast. 
<laughs> he could if he wanted to play on the It's wing. a rock, it's a mall. Uh, it's well, a throw in. That's, 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 what, that's what I'm here for. Yeah. Bringing, the, bringing the south of England naive, into, into, into the world of rugby. Oh, he's the, more importantly, he's the top scorer in Super League this season. Yeah. There are plenty of people in his position who could play for England. Yeah, but he's the best. It, it, look, performance-wise, should he play for England? Yeah, of course he should. Performance-wise, yeah. He's absolutely yeah. killing it. He's, he's an unbelievable what's, player. Yeah. What's the remit of the coaching and the selectors to pick the best players who mm -hmm. are eligible? So, yeah. crack on. Yeah, and yeah. but like Mori Fasavalu played with me in 2007. He, he was Samoan. Rangi you know, Chase. Rangi Chase. We've mm -hmm. had... Um, Chris Hyington played for yeah. two years. You know, it's not the first example.